Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is June 18, 2018. For this segment, we're going to talk a bit about a natural variability climate feature called El Nino, which has an impact on short-term global temperatures and what we're going to do is analyze how that will also interact with a longer-term climate change driven trend. So presently the earth is exiting a state called La Nina where sea surface temperatures in the equatorial Pacific tend to cool off and because the equatorial Pacific is so large this tends to have a, an effect on global temperatures as well. Now the recent La Nina period has been relatively weak and and it has also followed a La Nina during 2017 during 2017 so we have seen back-to-back -back weak La Nina years and it appears now that the Pacific Ocean in the equatorial region is starting to warm up and that we are starting to get a signal that an El Nino event come this winter is likely. So I'm going to switch views here. What we're looking at is the equatorial Pacific Ocean temperature anomaly at certain depths and this, this on the left-hand side is depths in meters and at certain latitudes. And we'll go ahead and refresh it so you can see what's going on here. So, so what we have is a, a wave of warm water that is downwelled from the eastern equatorial Pacific. It's, it's maintained submergence beneath the central equatorial Pacific and is starting to upwell in the west um, I'm sorry, in the eastern equatorial Pacific, it's downwelling in the western equatorial Pacific and upwelling in the eastern equatorial Pacific. So this, this warm wave of water is something that we call a Kelvin wave. And generally, El Niños are preceded by moderate to strong warm Kelvin waves. And this is a rather... Um, uh, a decent strength event. It's not extraordinarily strong, but it's it's strong enough so that it's start, starting to have some ocean interaction and starting to warm up sea surface temperatures in the equatorial Pacific. So at this point, NOAA expects a 60, I'm sorry, a 50 percent possibility of El Nino by this fall come September, October time frame. And by winter, a 65% chance of El Nino. Now, as I said at the beginning of this segment, El Nino has an effect on short-term global temperatures. And so what we've seen recently was that during 2016, we experienced the warmest temperatures on record globally for any year in all of the 137-year climate record. So, and at the same time, we experienced a rather strong El Nino. And the way El Nino tends to affect global climate over the, over the longer term period of global warming is that El Nino years tend to be among the warmest, but overlying a, a long-term warming trend. So for example, 2016 was an El Nino year, uh, 1998 was a strong El Nino year, 2002 was an El Nino year, uh, 2005 was an El Nino year. So, so most years where we see record global temperature, it also occurs during an El Nino, but El Nino is not the cause. The, the cause of the longer-term trend is a buildup of greenhouse gases. And so even uh, and during La Nina periods like 2017, the more recent La Nina periods are already, are already warmer than the older El Nino periods. So the cooling effect does have a, have a short-term wag. It creates these little dips, 
but it, it doesn't overcome the longer term warming trend. So what we'll likely see in 2018 is that global temperatures will be similar to those of 2017 and 2016. But if we get an El Nino in 2019 during the winter of 2018 and 2019, we'll tend to see temperatures begin to edge up again. And so it's possible that if there is an El Nino in 2019, as NOAA is predicting, that we could see the record warm temperatures that occurred globally during 2016 challenged again. And that would be a rather short period of time to receive another challenge, especially considering the fact that temperatures were about one degree Celsius above the NASA 20th century average and about 1.2 degrees Celsius above 1880s averages. And so if we get up to 1.2 C or so in 2019, it's, um, it's an indicator that, that we're, we're approaching a number of early climate thresholds relatively rapidly. And so we're, we'll be looking at 1.5 degrees Celsius warming uh, probably in the late 2020s or early 2030s depending on the way climate um, variables set up. But, um, but that, and that, that threshold is, is a relatively uh, risky threshold. And, and we're looking at risks of seeing two degrees Celsius uh, by the late 2030s to you know, early to mid 2040s, depending on how much fossil fuel we continue to burn. So the prediction of, so to sum up, the prediction of El Nino, potential El Nino, even though it's predicted to be a mild potential El Nino, could see us return to near record global hot temperatures in a very short period of time, um, even after an ol only a very mild respite. So stay tuned.